Hey, what's up guys? Ace Player here, and welcome back to the Ace Plays Podcast. It's the only place with an ace in a podcast. Last we spoke, the Chaos Mod update was near in completion, and it's finally been released. But before we get into that, I figured I'd go into a little bit of more background information about myself. Now, some people wonder why my updates are so awesome, and how they can be like me. Well, the road that I've walked is a tough one to say the least. A big thing that helps me is that I have played this game for over half my life at this point. Ever since I was a kid, I was enamored with Stick War 1, and from there, I've been a diehard fan ever since. So I have like a certain deep knowledge of this game, you know, just when you make a decision, you can feel it in your bones that it's the right call, you know? Not everyone is blessed with this foresight, unfortunately. But just knowing how to make an update awesome isn't all it takes, because you have to actually execute it, too. Critical thinking can only get you so far if you don't also employ critical action. So the second half of the equation that really helps me out with this is I have a computer science degree, and with an emphasis in game design and simulation. So a lot of my awesome ideas that I have, I actually know how to execute it just because I know basic computer science, and the advanced stuff too, but that's not really necessary to make what I'm making. So when you have deep knowledge and technical knowledge, that's when you're able to really give birth to something truly wonderful. Now, make no mistake, I've had a lot of these ideas for a long time, and I've actually suggested them for the official game for a long time, but a lot of them never made their way in, you know, due to whatever reason. So. I decided to go back to my awesome ideas and put them in my own mod. I mean, someone had to do it, right? Now, I've said this for a long time, but I always felt that Stick War 3 should have had multiple Magi Kill that do different things, and I should be able to bring all of them too if I wanted to. Since the Stick War 2 Magi Kill was so goaded with the sauce, I was actually able to split him up into three distinct Magi Kill, add a new mechanic, and it felt nice and fresh. I think that's just a testament to how cool it really was as a unit. Compared to what it is today, it's kind of a shame. One of the changes that I felt really heavily about is that minions should die over time. Honestly, I am sick and tired of the meta of Magi Kill just summoning endless minions for me to deal with. And, you know, this was a lot more prevalent in Legacy. And stuff like that became, like, pretty meta. Just maxing the Magi Kill hat and having three minions out at a time really just created a lot of fodder to deal with. And that felt kind of boring and also kind of unrealistic. Now, what do I mean by that? Obviously, summoning little midgets is already unrealistic in the first place. But I mean, like, the life force of the minion is unrealistic. How are you giving birth to this creature, you know, with magic, and it just lasts forever? To me, that never made sense, and it also made balance terrible, so I employed the idea of minions dying over time. This is prevalent in the Poison Magi Kill, who, you know, is a bit of a nod to the original, but with my unique twist. He also gets more minions over time, if he just keeps summoning. Now, this would be hell if the minions never died over time. You would just be getting swarmed endlessly by these guys. But... Due to this, you know, they're able to get a few cool hits in, but they're kind of out of the game after that. They still retain the strength of a wizard who is summoning things, but they don't break the game and become completely necessary either. Another cool change I made was to the electric magi kill. Now, believe it or not, I was looking around in the code, and the electric wall was originally called a stun wall. I guess they planned on implementing some kind of stun for this thing, but maybe it was too strong, and they opted to just make it do a lot of damage if you stand in it, which nobody did, by the way. It was a pretty useless spell, unless you were able to do a really cool callout and predict where they were going to dodge, and they just dodged right into it. So I decided to bring the stun back. Now, I didn't want to do it in a way that was annoying and just left you stuck in the wall to take all the damage, because that's a little overpowered. Instead, I chose to make it do little incremental bits of stun every time you got hit. So you could slowly shimmy your way out of there, I suppose. You'd be getting stunned, 
and then moving and getting stunned and then moving. Now, when it came to making a decision on what to do when, you know, this magic kill got its stacks up, I could have just made it spawn more electric walls. That would have been a very, you know, boring and generic answer to the, you know, question of what to do. Instead, I chose to make the magi kill wall move too. Because like I said earlier, nobody was really standing in the electric wall for free. So, what if the electric wall came to you? The more stacks this magi kill had, the further it would go out and the faster too. So this created a kind of a situation where you'd want to actually dodge inwards, which could leave you susceptible to other things. And you know, for the explosion magi kill, the answer was simple. More explosion. We all knew that was coming. He would get a ring of, you know, up to five mini explosions surrounding his actual explosion. Hopefully that doesn't cause a lot of lag. <laughs> I didn't check. Another unit that I felt had some missed potential that I really wanted to work some of my magic on was the Shadow Wrath. Now, the ninja has always been super cool. Everyone loves how sneaky and cool he is. His Shinobi ability was awesome. But a glaring issue that kind of happened was that it was pretty useless if your opponent just paid attention and walked away on time. He kind of became a cheese gimmick unit in Stick War 2. And he's, you know, not that great in 3 either, but he's definitely way less cool. I wanted to kind of take all of these issues and fix all of them at the same time. I wanted to create a more viable and more cool Shadow Wrath. So, the sneaky Shadow Wrath was born. When he enters Shinobi, he actually completely disappears into the battlefield, health bar and all. You can't even see his shadow. This gives the player an immediate sensation of, oh god, I don't feel safe anymore. Little did you know, he teleported behind you and it was nothing personal, kid. That's the type of anxiety you should actually feel from a cool, sneaky ninja. Now, on the surface, this sounds like a pretty unfair mechanic. You know, the player doesn't even have any feedback on where the ninja went. But, this is where we can implement a little thing called learning. You know, I think it's always unfortunate when a game developer treats their player base like their children without a brain, because children can actually be pretty smart, but also, you know, the rest of the world exists too. When something happens to you a few times, you tend to learn how to deal with it, or, you know, you flop on the floor. This teleportation gimmick may shock a player for the first or second time or so, but by then, they should probably learn one of two strategies to counter it which is either have another unit nearby to tank the hit, or walk forward because they teleported behind you. This is what stops that character from actually being overpowered and broken. Now, the other thing that helps is that it's a predictable pattern because the AI is doing it and not another player. If another player actually had access to this ability, it'd probably be pretty mean. But then again, maybe that's what the Shadow Wrath needs. Yeah, long story short, I think I succeeded in creating the coolest iteration of the Shadow Wrath yet. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. Now, a unit that I was actually excited for for a long time, like way before the order part of the Chaos campaign even begun, was the uh, exploding albatross that would belly flop onto the floor and create an even bigger explosion. This unit idea may have single-handedly helped me will through the first half of the Chaos Campaign because I couldn't really implement this guy until we got to the Order section. So, who knows if we'll ever get another update now that this guy exists. I'll have to find some other extrinsic motivator. But anyway, he's really funny, and I actually tied in the spawning of the Sneaky Ninja to this Albatross's death. In the level, you're kind of bumping into a scouting party, so you kind of alerted the Shadow Wrath to your location, if you will. I think this worked out pretty well. It was predictable, which helps set up your strategy. That's already a lot of really cool units, but I didn't just stop at making cool guys too. Let's take a break from that and talk about some of the AI changes that went into this update. <clears throat> So a really cool thing that I added was Smarter Spiritans that actually shield wall if it's applicable. Now, it's pretty hard to determine, you know, when that should be happening because you have to write code that does this and it can't really check for every situation going on in your current thing and make the, a really appropriate Spiritan block that a human player would. That's asking a little too much. 
What I opted for instead was a simple logic approach, where if there is more than one Spiritan on the battlefield, shielding may be applicable. So the first Spiritan on the battlefield will assume a shielding position. Now, how do they decide where to go and who to shield for? That's also a good question, and I had to make a decision on this. What I ended up going for was he will first try to block for Magi Kill, Merix, and if that is impossible, Archidons. If none of those three are around to defend for, he's just not going to be blocking. A secondary type of Spiritan that I added was a Basher, and he pretty much, you know, just attacked like a normal Spiritan, but whenever Bash was off cooldown, they would shield and bash and then get back to business. This was a lot more straightforward than the shielding approach because they would already, you know, be attacking in the first place. Along with that, I also made the Marokai boss run away faster when he dies. Uh, or gets lower on HP, rather. He doesn't completely die, because then it's over. I think at around 25% HP or so, I start running back all the way to the statue, and we'll start using that for cover, and just kind of try and wait you out for your statue to come closer, and uh, you pretty much have to chase them down a bit, instead of them just running into you. I assume that change was pretty welcome, because people were having a little too easy of a time beating that boss, and maybe I might have to do something else still. We'll see. A really fun part of modding, and you know, it's kind of the spirit of modding, is figuring out how to reuse existing aspects of the game into your own thing. And I was able to achieve that with the cutscene that was originally in Stick War 2. And when it came to the cutscene level, I had a little gameplay change up. You used to originally be killing a giant to start the cutscene, but this time you were the giant, and you know, you had a very unfortunate outcome. Now you're Medusa giving the monologue of a century, and orders down there basically watching it go down. I cut off the second half of the cutscene where the two order sides meet up and make up, because that's not what we're here for. I also added a new game mode, finally. This has never been seen before. It was a multi-stage raid attack on the Grass Hills, since that map was so massive. I figured I'd be able to set up multiple outposts, and I even had little background characters that would run away, and then uh, actually turn around and become reinforcements. Now the Spiritans, who were very brave, would just run straight to the battlefield, which was pretty cool. And I think this added a lot of like immersion to that level. Really felt like, you know, these were villages you were taking care of, because there was houses in the back. And it just worked out very nicely, and I think, you know, stick work could be a lot cooler if this kind of stuff was going on more. So, I'm happy that I added it. I always had that idea floating around in the back of my head, and had to make it reality. Now, some people weren't a fan of how abrupt that level was, because, you know, you got insta queue and you were doing these raids, and they didn't really consider it a real level, which, yeah, I understand. It is a bit of a different experience. And next update, we'll have a lot more of those normal levels. You know, a lot of the update was mainly setting up all these unique units. And then, you know, the next update is going to be me getting to use a lot of them. <laughs> so that'll be fun. I won't spoil what, you know, those levels will entail. But a certain unit, or two maybe, will get some special things. More on that at some other time. Now, I got a lot of really nice comments from the last episode, such as W Podcast, and you have a very handsome voice, perfect for podcasts, and all I gotta say is thank you guys. But one that really stuck out to me, and it was pretty funny, this guy says, At some point, people are hyping for Stick War 2 mods more than Stick War 3 itself. Ouch. I mean, someone's gotta make Stick War great again, that's all I'm saying. I also have to give a special shout out to my boy Kirk, who used aceplayer.com slash donate to support the development of the Chaos Campaign. These kind of things just help me make it even bigger and greater than I was already planning. So thank you. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this episode. Let me know if you have any questions you would like answered, and maybe I'll pick them next time. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.